Hi everybody, this is Laura City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today I'm making a layout using my gel plate. I'm also using some Shimmers Paints Color Splash Sprays. This is a glossy acrylic spray and the color I'm using right now is Sea Breeze. A lot of gel prints can be very bold, but of course, that's something that can be controlled and I thought that using these shimmers sprays would be a perfect way to create more subtle backgrounds. I knew I wanted to make a blue sky background and I knew it was going to be a sunburst so I'm using a tool to draw some lines in the sprays on the background. At this point and still I'm just starting out with the gel plate so I was really experimenting. I thought I would make a couple of backgrounds and then I would have more than one background to choose from. I'm again making the lines that are in the shape of the sunburst that I plan to use in the background. The paper that I'm using is an 80 pound smooth white cardstock so I line up my paper and I press it down really well and then this is the background. I think this one came a little bit better but I'm not done yet. One of the great things about gel prints is you can add layers of color. So I'm going to take both of those pulls and I'm going to add some more paint to both of them. I know that this might look a little plain and maybe a little odd at this point, but I hope that you'll stick with me and you could see what my vision was because this was actually just what I wanted to create. I do like how both of the backgrounds looked when I added a little bit more color to them. What's nice about the gel plate, particularly for scrapbooking, is that you can create a very detailed background, very colorful, or you can essentially create an interesting background that is not super varied in color, but it looks far more interesting than just a piece of flat cardstock. Then I decided to add one more layer of color in the background. Since I have two different backgrounds and I have two to choose from, I figured I might as well just see what happens here. Since my last video where I used my gel plate to make a background for a scrapbook page, I've had a number of people comment that they have a gel plate and they haven't used it yet and if that's the case or if you're interested I would highly recommend playing with this gel plate. It is so much fun. This one is 12 by 14 inches. You can get a 12 by 12 inch gel plate or if you just want to play there are much smaller ones and they get a little more expensive as they get bigger but the smaller ones are very reasonably priced. In the last few months I've had a little bit of a slump creatively and I think this has really helped me because it's a new way of approaching things and it kind of got my brain working again so I'm really glad that I gave this a try. So As I mentioned I'm going to have a sunburst background on this layout so there's going to be two layers to it. So the blue is going to be one layer and now I'm going to make a pink and yellow layer. I think this was the very first time that I used my gel plate and I didn't even think I was going to create anything usable. So some of the filming here might be a little funky because I threw the camera up there but I really didn't think I was going to be using this footage so I have to apologize. I sprayed some pink and I sprayed some yellow kind of randomly. I pressed down the paper and I thought this was kind of a cool effect but I was thinking that I wanted to cover a little bit more of the background with the paint. Sorry about waving the paper around there, not sure what that was about. I'm going to add another layer of paint to that background. This time I'm using a little bit more paint because these are sprays, they spread around very easily. And I'm very sorry I don't have footage of me pressing down the paper and pulling it from the plate, but you will get to see the paper briefly before I put another layer on it. So I pulled that print, I put it aside to dry. One of the fun things about gel printing is you could add lots of layers of color. I'm using a stencil I made on my Silhouette Cameo and some very inexpensive white acrylic paint and I am spreading that paint out with my brayer. I pulled the stencil off and now I'm going to take that print that I made earlier and there we go that's the print that I had made and I'm going to carefully place that down on my gel plate and I am rubbing 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 
trying to transfer as much of that white acrylic paint to the background as possible. I peeked a little bit and then I placed it back down again, rubbed some more, and I absolutely love the way that that background came out. I used my Silhouette Cameo and a Sunburst cut file and I cut the blue paper out in a sunburst shape. The reason I chose to cut out the blue paper in the sunburst pattern rather than the yellow and pink paper is because I thought the yellow and pink paper was very unique and I didn't have any other prints that were similar to that. But if you recall, I made two different versions of the blue paper. So I thought in case something went wrong in the cutting process, I have another piece of blue paper, but I don't have another piece of the other paper. And although it looks kind of funny right now, the sun is blue, I know I'm going to be covering up that part of the layout with my photo. But now I'm gluing that blue layer down. I'm using some gel glue and I am using the edges of the sun rays to line up with the edges of the background paper, that helps me to put it in the right spot. Now I was impatient and I put this blue background through my laminator to flatten it out before it was 100% dry and that caused one of these rays to tear. Off camera I used one of the scraps of blue paper, I cut it to the right size and then I just replaced that ray. I cut out a white circle and I put it on the layout where I knew my photo was going to go so I would know where to put stitching. I'm going to stitch along the edge of each of those rays. I'm using some white embroidery thread and a very simple back stitch. I am not a great stitcher. I really only stitch on paper with any success, but I really love the look of stitching. And I think that it'll bring those two layers of the background together, provide some definition and texture. So it did take a little bit of time to do the stitching, but I think it's really worth it. And you'll see that in just a moment. I have to say that attaching that circle down really didn't work too well. It was flopping around. So I ended up just drawing a pencil circle so I would know where to put the stitching. And then I used that white circle as a mat for this beautiful photo that my daughter took when she went to the Dominican Republic last spring. She took some great scenic photos. I'm having such a good time scrapbooking them. I adhered the photo to the mat and then I'll adhere the mat to the background. I used Creative Memories circle cutters to cut out those circles. And I was thinking that it would look nice to have some pink paper behind that just to give a little more emphasis to the photo. So I am using a piece of pink paper. I had it in my scraps of pink paper. You can see there were a couple of different pattern papers that I tried out. I finally decided on this one. I inked the edges with some Distress Oxide in Picked Raspberry. And once again, I'm adding some adhesive to the back. I add a little bit of wet glue because I know that it's going to have a hard time sticking to the background with the mixed media and the stitching. So I thought I was sure of where I wanted my photo. So I glued it down. I did use my T-square to make sure that the horizon line on my photo was going straight across the page. I came across these Jolie's Wave stickers in my stash. I had two different packs. One was slightly larger waves going in different directions. There were some small ones mixed into that set. There were also some waves that were smaller, lighter blue, and it was just a repeat of the same wave. So I started off with the larger pieces and then I worked some of the smaller waves in there as well. I thought this would look nice surrounding this photo. I also went through my embellishment packs and I pulled out a number of embellishments that I thought matched the layout in color and in theme. They are from a whole bunch of different manufacturers. The Paper Studio, Recollections, Jolie's, Paper House stickers. I have that pink hibiscus flower that's from Kay and Company, although that doesn't end up on the final layout. I also have a Dollar Tree starfish that matched in color, but it was just a little bit too big, I thought, for the other embellishments that are on the layout. 
this sand dollar also thought this would go well with the layout. This also doesn't make it onto the final layout. I was being really fussy about the colors and I knew there wasn't room for a ton of embellishments, so I tried to be really careful. I'm going to use this word as part of my title, beach. I thought the colors matched really well. I surrounded it with some of those Jolie's waves. And then in this paper house pack, there was a title that said beach with a little at the on the top. I prefer the sentiment that I have on the layout that says beach to the one that was on the other sticker pack. So I just trimmed off the words at the and layered them on top of the word beach. And I will definitely save that word beach that I cut the at the off of. I will definitely be able to use that by layering something over the top corner of it. I'm looking for embellishments that are blue and pink and even a little yellow. And I came across these really cute paper studio starfish. They are sparkly and pink. And I thought they went in really well with the layout. And then as I was working on this layout, my husband handed me a Bramble Fox Fox box that I had just got in, in the mail. And I noticed there were these really cute little clouds in that. So I decided to incorporate those into the layout. I thought it was just what it needed, a little something in the background. I picked out three clouds, but I end up just using two of them. I wanted to add some bling to the background. I have this white bling in two different sizes. It's very small, but one is a little bit smaller than the other one. And I decided after trying one of the slightly larger ones to go with the small ones. These are called stone stickers. They're made by Angel Craft. They come in strips and I'm just cutting those strips into individual pieces and I'm just spreading those little stones around the large photo cluster and then I'll also put some near the title cluster just to add a little bit of interest and a little bit of bling to the layout. For such tiny embellishments, they really add a whole lot of sparkle. I continued to add those jewels mainly on the background, but I did put a couple of them on the waves that are surrounding the photo. I picked out this blue umbrella that I thought matched the layout really well, but I forgot to put it on the layout. So now I'm rearranging a couple of embellishments. This is where I decided to remove the sand dollar, move a wave around, and then layer the little seagull on top of it. And to help the umbrella stay in place, I added a little bit of extra adhesive. It didn't seem like it was going to stay on the page if I didn't do that. And I like the way it looks with something a little bit higher on the right-hand side of the photo cluster. As I was looking through my embellishments, I found that I had a small turquoise shell. So I added that to the title cluster. Then I started to rearrange those clouds. I did that for a while until I finally decided I was just going to have two in the upper right hand corner. I was also thinking that I should have some pink behind the title. That way the title would be balanced with the photo. So I cut a piece of that same pattern paper to size. I wanted to make a mat with just a small border of pink going around the edge of the title. I again use the picked raspberry distress oxide to ink the edges. I like that addition. I think that that little bit of pink going around the title ties the whole layout together. A little earlier, I took that pink hibiscus flower off of the layout. I just thought that it looked a little lonely on top of the photo. Maybe if I had another smaller one, it would have looked a little more balanced, but I ultimately decided against it. And then I had put some of those shiny stones on either side of the sentiment below the photo that says love this and I use those on the clouds. I thought that that would help to tie the clouds in with the rest of the layout and then just like the sentiment that says at the in the title I thought that I would add some rhinestones to either side of the other sentiment and then I had some of those rhinestones left over so I decided that I would sprinkle those around the background as well. I realized one of the clouds had raindrops on it, so I switched it for one of the plain clouds. And then after I added a few more rhinestones, this layout is complete and here are some close-ups. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. 
If you have a gel plate or think you would like a gel plate, I hope you give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Check out the Shimmers website. The link is in the description box. If you place an order and mention my name, you'll get a free gift. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.